indeed all shock. While many of us first and foremost think of Mshuari as a lending product, it is perhaps even more critical to recognize that the product has bridged a gap in financial inclusion, allowing over 15 million customers throughout the years to build a savings culture. And Your Excellency, I know you have talked a lot about developing a savings culture. Today we are honored that these customers has entrusted us with over 35 billion shillings in savings, small, small savings, Your Excellency, through Mshuari. These savings have enabled these customers to unlock lending facilities to fulfill longer-term needs for their businesses and indeed their personal lives. In 2019, Safaricom, NCBA, and KCB came together to introduce another first, Fuliza, an overdraft solution linked to a customer's mobile money wallet. At its core, Fuliza was intended to serve as a source of credit to help the average Kenyan quickly and easily meet emergency needs at the till and beyond. This was a complimentary offering to Mshuari and to KCB and PESA. Since its launch, over 28 million customers across the country have opted into Fuliza, and indeed, the year-on-year growth in credit disbursements is a testament that Kenyans see value in this offering. During the unprecedented COVID-19 pandemic, we saw a surge in the number of customers accessing Fuliza on a daily basis as it revealed a much-needed tool to smoothen household incomes at a time of great financial need. As we emerged from the pandemic, we, in partnership with Safaricom and KCB, began to look at the customer behavior on Fuliza to assess if it was serving its intended purpose. From the data that we have looked at, Your Excellency, it is clear that the original intent for Fuliza to be a short-term facility for four to seven days has evolved. Many customer and PESA wallets are now remaining of a drone for 14 to 19 days on average. This was not the intention of Fuliza, as it embeds the wrong credit behavior and increases the cost of credit, which is a big concern uh, for us and for government. And this is what we seek to address today. As a lender, we strongly believe that we have a responsibility to ensure that our products are well understood by our customers, are being utilized appropriately, and that we continue to make adjustments along the way to ensure the long-term sustainability of these propositions. To this end, today we'll be announcing changes to the Fuliza proposition with the goal of amending the features of the product back to its intended purpose, emergency short-term credit. With the right use of Fuliza, customers will see a benefit in their cost of credit and borrowing experience. And more importantly, hopefully, Your Excellency, we'll no longer hear that very common phrase, Tuma Kwahi Namba Ingine. Further, we are aware that there is a pervasive negative narrative around CRBs, Your Excellency, and in particular the relationship between digital credit providers and the CRB. CRBs in Kenya have continued to develop and mature as an important credit information sharing market infrastructure. Over our 10-year history as an industry, we have shared both positive and negative information on 18 million customers. Of these, more than 75% are listed as having positive credit histories. The positive listing has enabled them to access increased credit facilities across a variety of financing institutions and unlock their ability to pursue their aspirations. We do not wish, however, Your Excellency, to leave the customers with negative history behind, and indeed, they should not be blacklisted. Today, we wish to express We wish to express our intention to work with our partners and other industry stakeholders and indeed with your government to develop a collaborative mechanism to repair the credit histories, the credit histories of these customers. The specific mechanisms for the credit repair and indeed access to credit will be communicated before 1st of November, Your Excellency. Our purpose as NCBA is to inspire greatness. Our business philosophy appreciates that our financial, institutions, our financial institution license is entrusted to us by the CBK, and thank you, Governor, 
on behalf of the community we serve. Essentially, it is a social license with the communities that we belong to as corporate citizens to conduct a role of financial intermediation for the benefit of society. The announcements that we'll be making today are informed by listening to our customers who have seen great utility in digital credit to enable them to respond to opportunity, manage shocks, and make investments as the key agent in the growth of our economies. Your Excellency, we have heard the message from those who sent you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Gashora, for really highlighting and taking us back to the intention of some of these innovations. Because Kenyans have been called a Fuliza nation. And this is a term that might uh, have robbed people of dignity, but I think we are getting back to a space that we are owning that, that we are setting, we are trailblazing in Africa, that the access to emergency microcredit is available and in a dignified way. And even as we keep talking about data for good, I think it's important that we start using this data uh, for good. So CRB will no longer be that list that we don't want to be part of, but we will be talking about positive uh, credit listing. Your Excellency, sir, I'd like to bring on stage Mr. Paul Russo, the Group Chief Executive of KCB. Karibu. Your Excellency, the President of the Republic of Kenya, Dr. William Samoy Ruto, uh, Cabinet Secretaries present, both outgoing and incoming and nominees, the CBK Governor, Dr. Patrick Njoroge, Safaricom CEO Peter Ndegua, NCBA CEO John Gashora, technical advisors present, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, allow me to run an abridged version of what I needed to say. First and most important, um, it is a very um, you know, spacious occasion, normally to get two banks coming together in a telco to deliver an innovative product is not what many people are aware of. But I think it, it's a term that we've decided to use, um, more than partnership, but about delivering financial inclusion. Through the collaboration of these three organizations, we've built some innovative uh, products, and uh, John Kashora has talked about a number of them. But I think, uh, Your Excellency, the challenge remains. It's about creating meaningful livelihoods. And that challenge is something we have to tackle together as partners and stakeholders. Mine, from a KCB perspective, is to say we need to collectively come together, and you've given us that challenge, to give accessible and affordable credit to address that challenge. Fuliza addresses the individual. We have to tackle the SME and micro, Your Excellency. And you can count on this team to work with your government to deliver that the soonest. Technology and partnership offers the single most important part to addressing the credit issue. Now, bringing those partners together requires the goodwill of government, and thank you, Excellency, for being here to confirm that, but also of institutions of good standing. Over the years as KCB, we've demonstrated that we, working with others, can deliver over 2.1 million uh, you know, mobile lending, 2.1 trillion, Your Excellency, a 39% growth. That, again, we keep having to ask ourselves from a sustainable finance perspective, whether it's transforming lives. We've moved uh, mobile lending values again to 91 billion just in the first half of the year. But we are confident working together, Your Excellency, and the challenge that we've given us, that we are not only going live in the new structure and the new setup of Fuliza, but finally that we will fast track using technology to deliver on, if I may borrow your term, Mamashiko. Thank you, Your Excellency, and thank you. Everybody. Thank you, Mr. Russo, for painting a very clear picture of inclusivity. If I could just throw a number at uh, you this afternoon, is that this is a truly transformational journey when it comes to inclusivity. Women are perhaps the biggest beneficiaries of this. We're talking about 17 million of M-Pesa registered users being women. And this could just, you could imagine the good it could uh, if it's optimized. 
Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to bring on stage the Chief Executive Officer uh, of Safaricom, Mr. Peter Ndegwa. Your Excellency, uh, the President, uh, Dr. Uh, William Ruto, um, Dr. Patrick Njoroge, uh, my, uh, my regulator, I have to behave when my regulator is around, Governor of the Central Bank of Kenya, uh, John Gashora, uh, my fellow CEOs, John Gashora, uh, Paul Russo uh, of, C uh, of uh, NCBA and KCB, um, Cabinet Secretaries, although I should, from a protocol perspective, I should have uh, acknowledged cap uh, Cabinet Secretaries, both uh, outgoing and incoming, Distinguished uh, guests, ladies and gentlemen, um, all protocols observed. Uh, I wanted to say that uh, before I start, uh, whilst John Gashora used uh, a paper, uh, given that I, I, I work for a telecommunication business, I have to, <laughs> I have to use my iPad. Um, and uh, <laughs> yes, I had to catch you on that, John. Um, and uh, the second thing is that I, I know that both Paul and, uh, uh, and John have spoken about uh, partnerships. So I want to talk about both the power of MPESA, uh, the power of partnership between private sector, but also when we involve government, uh, including regulators. We can uh, create great things. Uh, we can really uh, transform lives. Uh, Safaricom uh, uh, purpose is all about transforming lives. We launched MPESA in t back in 2007. Uh, where there was only uh, 600,000 loan accounts uh, in the country uh, of 35 million. So there was a lot of excluded uh, people. Today, we have grown more th to more than 20 uh, million loan accounts uh, due to services designed for Mwanainchi, uh, such as uh, Mshwari, uh, MKCB, uh, Fuliza, amongst others. The impact has expanded and afforded uh, credit access uh, it is demonstrated by stories of ordinary people like Mama Lena, uh, one of our customers. Mama Lena began her entrepreneurship journey by borrowing a few thousand shillings uh, through M-Pesa to start a business. Uh, and I know, Your Excellency, you've spoken about many stories like those uh, of Mama Lena. Her business has expanded uh, to employ another five uh, women. Uh, in total, uh, they support more than 25 other dependents. Um, so over 600,000 Kenyans have also purchased their first ever smartphone because as we think about uh, access, digit, uh, digital access is very important and access to smartphones is a big enabler of that. So we are driving what we call Lipam Dogo Mdogo, enabling them to, to participate in the digital economy by paying 500 shillings as a deposit and 20 shillings off their M-Pesa uh, every day. We launched Fuliza, as uh, John has said, in 2019, the first ever service. Uh, that empowered customers to complete a mobile money transaction in case of insufficient funds, uh, so being a short-term uh, product. The innovation came after we observed that our customers would, within two days, repeat 50% of the M-Pesa transactions uh, that had failed due to, due to lack of funds. Fuliza, therefore, empowers a customer to complete the transaction when they need uh, to, rather than postpone, uh, and miss the opportunity uh, since, uh, simply because they do not have a few hundred shillings or even 10 shillings. The governor was telling me about uh, someone trying to buy medicine uh, and not having the amount to actually complete uh, that transaction. So beginning, uh, and uh, to, to John's point, uh, beginning 1st of October, together with our partners NCBA and KCB, we are further building on our Fuliza partnership to empower more Kenyans with even more affordable access to credit. All customers will enjoy Fuliza free on a, uh, of the daily maintenance fee for transactions below 1,000 um, and, and uh, below three days. So the, for the first three days, they won't have to pay uh, any uh, daily maintenance fee, which they pay today. <laughs> this affects 80% of the current Fuliza transactions enabling us to further achieve Fuliza's true goal of empowering customers to complete transactions in case of insufficient funds. The three-day free 
daily maintenance uh, fee period will allow customers who currently use Fleezer to complete more transactions while attracting more customers to the solution since it's more affordable. In addition, we are reducing the daily maintenance fee by 50% for Fuliza transactions of uh, 1,000 and below. Um, <laughs> customers will also enjoy um, reductions in daily maintenance fee for transactions above 1,000 uh, up to a maximum of 70,000. Uh, we will maintain the Fuliza uh, access fee at the current 1% across all transactions, including those of 1,000 and below. This establishes Fuliza as the most accessible and affordable credit facility at only 1% of the transaction value, especially when customers repay uh, within a relatively short period of time. Um, uh, in total, these changes uh, will, uh, will in, in a cumulative, lead to a 50% overall reduction in Fuliza tariffs across the board. At Safaricom, we believe we can only succeed when our customers are succeeding. We are therefore regularly, uh, we regularly pursue initiatives that uplift our customers, especially during these tough economic times. Some of our previous initiatives include free M-Pesa transactions below 100, uh, which we still provide to date, which we call the Cadogo economy. During COVID, we provided M-Pesa transactions below 1,000 for free uh, of charge to support customers and businesses to transact remotely. We further reduced our M-Pesa rates by up to 45% in January 2021 after reinstatement of fees, enabling our customers to continue enjoying more affordable rates. Um, and following today's announcements, millions of customers and businesses will benefit from free access to uh, and, and reduced access um, or affordable access to credit, enabling them to do more with M-Pesa. I wish to re recognize Your Excellency, uh, Dr. William Ruto, uh, our president, whose government support has made it possible and inspired us uh, to reduce our Fuliza rates as part of the commitment to provide Kenyans with sustainable and affordable credit. I thought you would clap. In addition, I also want to thank the Central Bank uh, of Kenya under the leadership of Governor uh, Patrick Njoroge for your support uh, for more than 15 years that M-Pesa has existed uh, for you and your predecessors. Um, further, I appreciate our partners, uh, NCBA uh, and KCB Group, alongside their respective CEOs, uh, John and Paul, for their long-standing partnership that enables us to deliver innovative and affordable financial solutions to our customers. Going forward, we maintain our commitment to our customers to continue delivering affordable and innovative products, including both for individuals but also for uh, enterprises and, and merchants are being a big, a, a, a big opportunity. Um, these also include investments that will empower our customers to grow their financial health, not just inclusion but also financial health, of course subject to necessary regulatory approval. So we are delighted today. Uh, we are happy to partner uh, both in private but also with the government and the regulator uh, to deliver great news uh, for Kenyans. Uh, and thank you for your inspiration, Your Excellency. And now I invite uh, Patrick Njoroge, Dr. Patrick Njoroge, uh, the Central Bank Governor, to say a few words and invite Your Excellency. Thank you very much. Your Excellency, Honorable William Samoy Ruto, President of the Republic of Kenya and Commander in Chief of the Defense Forces, um, I need to recognize the nominated uh, uh, CSs, um, Professor Juguna Dungu, who will be uh, hopefully uh, in the National Treasury <laughs> <laughs> after the requisite. Uh, 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 interrogations have taken place. Of course, uh, um, the nominated uh, CS for, for ICT, Eliud Owalo, um, there he is. Um, the other members uh, that, uh, that I need to also mention. But 
I would want to mention the specifically um, John Gashora, the group CEO or group managing director in CBA, Paul Russo, uh, group managing director KCB, Peter Ndegwa, CEO of Safaricom, Michael Joseph, who has been everywhere <laughs> and uh, <laughs> remains everywhere. Thank you very much. The others in the room, Governor Nanok, others, uh, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. I'm grateful for the opportunity to be here um, as KCB and CBA and Safaricom announced important changes on the Fuliza overdraft product. Since it is its launch in 2019, Fuliza has become a critical part of the financial lives of millions of Kenyans, given its mobile, its mobile phone-centric delivery channel. Kenyans are very much in the mobile phones, much more than anyone else, else around the world. Now, the fin access survey that we conducted in 2021 Two years after the launch, after the launch of uh, the Fuliza product, indicated that over five million Kenyans had accessed Fuliza in the preceding 12 months. Five million. And this is a testament that the product is meeting the needs of Kenyans, particularly for short-term bridging finance. Your Excellency, I was talking to my barber about Fuliza. Uh, I need to talk to him for other reasons as well. You know. uh, um, and I asked him an important, how important is Fuliza to you? I asked him. And he replied emphatically, very important. And that's when he told me this example that I've communicated to uh, Peter. If your child is sick, it's at night, you go to the pharmacy, you have 1,000 shillings, you go to the pharmacy, and then they charge, you go to the till, and the cost is 1,070. What do you do? You don't have 70. You cannot take half the medicine back. So what do you do? And his point was, that's when Fuliza comes in. So I can Fuliza for 70, and then I'll sort myself out in the next two, three days. So that's how important it is. I guess uh, it is Im important for us to see that there's a, seg uh, there's a large segment of our population that in the end will become income constrained in that, or liquidity constrained at a very critical point, and that's when Fuliza comes in. Now, given the three-year track record of the product, our review is very much in order. The Central Bank of Kenya therefore welcomes the um, this restructuring of the product, including the pricing changes announced today. In our view, this is but a first step in ensuring that the cost is affordable and draws more Kenyans into the financial services net. And as we know, a journey of a thousand miles starts but with a single step. The appetite for credit amongst Kenyans remains high as evidenced by the Fin Access Survey. Uptake of credit between 2016 and 2021 rose much faster compared to the savings rate. However, the cost of credit has been a major concern for Kenyans. Various initiatives are underway to address these concerns we have listened. We will act. For the banking sector, CPK issued the banking, banking sector charter in 2019 with four key pillars, customer centricity, risk-based credit pricing, transparency, and ethical banking. In particular, the risk-based credit pricing pillar seeks to ensure that banks' cost of credit is aligned to the risk profile of borrowers and is affordable. Implementation of risk-based credit pricing is well underway in the Kenyan banking sector. This has been supported by reforms to the credit information sharing mechanisms 
effected through the uh, Banking um, Credit Reference Bureau regulations of 2020. We've listened and action is on the way. Your Excellency, we have an ecosystem that we have to preserve. We have an ecosystem that we have to make grow. We have an ecosystem of products, pricing, etc., that really has to transform the lives of Kenyans. And this is really what we've listened to. We've listened, we are going to act on it. Finally, I challenge banks, payment service providers, and other actors in the financial ecosystem on three fronts. First, the customer must remain at the center of all that you do. These needs, uh, their needs must drive all financial services and products. As you know, Your Excellency, um, on the 17th of this month, we began firmly regulating the digital credit providers that have been a problem in this country. So all that business of them calling you or calling, uh, let's say, a customer, a borrower, and demanding um, that the payment be done using an ethical means, that is a thing of the past. <laughs> Second, the products and services should be accessible and not just from a delivery channel perspective, but also affordable. So the importance of affordability. Thirdly, and ultimately, it's about uplifting the lives and livelihoods of our citizens. Your Excellency, we are in this country. We've listened. We are acting on it. It's now my distinct honor to welcome you, Your Excellency, to make your remarks. I ask you to stand up. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Let's take our seats. Asante Nisana, um, the Governor of Central Bank, CEOs of uh, Safaricom, KCB, NCBA. NCBA, is that correct? Yes. Uh, distinguished leaders, present, uh, members of uh, the financial uh, sector, good afternoon. Let me first, on uh, my own behalf and on behalf of my government, appreciate that we are having a conversation today about hustlers. This is very important to me. And I remember when I, I uh, was informed about this meeting and about what uh, Safaricom and your partners were uh, intended to do. I was actually planning to have a meeting with you. So <laughs> I, th I think somebody must have leaked to you that, uh, <laughs> that I was looking for you because uh, I have been sent by your customers the people who cannot make it to your offices, the people who cannot make it to the negotiating table, uh, have sent me to you. Because uh, they want the relationship between you and them to be mutual. And they want a win-win um, outcome out of the relationship that you have with them. Because they can't find their way to your good offices, they have given me instructions to come and speak to you about their issues. And I am happy that uh, you already are walking in the correct trajectory. The announcements you have made here are very positive in the, in the right direction. I am very confident that walking this journey in the direction you have started, we will get to the correct destination. You are aware that uh, 
in the last several months in the campaign, Fuliza was a very popular word in our campaign. And, uh, and I'm happy that you are listening. And because you are listening, today you have made uh, a very positive uh, statement on matters for Lisa. First, I am very happy that between four and five million Kenyans will by end of, uh, uh, by beginning of November, they will be out of the blacklisting. That is very important. Very important because these four million Kenyans have been excluded from any formal borrowing because of blacklisting, and they have been left at the mercy of Shylocks and predatory lenders that exploit them. And many Kenyans pay as much as a thousand percent for credit. The fact that they will now be out of that space is a very positive development. And I want to commit here that the government of Kenya is not against credit listing or credit bureau uh, facilities. In fact, we support CRBs as a mechanism of instilling financial discipline in our financial sector. What we are asking and I think we are on the same page on this, and I've had a long conversation with the governor. What we are asking is we don't want credit listing to be an all or nothing, in or out engagement. We want credit listing to be a facility that gives everybody a chance to be their best in their own time. Instead of saying you are in or out, we should have a credit scoring mechanism so that we have graduated from the least to the best. And everybody can have a chance, even if you are somewhere at the bottom, you can always walk your way up as you learn the ropes in the financial sector. So. Um, I am happy Governor has told me they are having engagement with the CRBs so that we can change the credit uh, listing mechanism. Instead of blacklisting, we can have a graduated mechanism that allocates rating on every citizen that is borrowing in the manner in which they have borrowed and in the manner in which they have paid back. That happens even for countries when we are borrowing money from IMF, from the World Bank. That is a universal principle of rating people on, or scoring people on uh, matters uh, credit. So that development is a very, develop, a very positive uh, development for the millions of Kenyans who suffer great loss they are excluded from for, uh, formal borrowing, and they are also excluded from many other things. Some people lose jobs. Some people lose opportunity to be hired because when they are asked to bring their uh, credit uh, listing uh, uh, status, if you are blacklisted, then you are told you are not a very good person. So that will now redeem close to 4 million Kenyans, and I want to say to Safaricom and your partners, you're walking in the right direction. <laughs> Secondly, we have agreed, and I am happy the CEO of Safaricom has announced here that access to Fuliza, the interest rate will come down by 50%. That is a step in the right direction. And many people will benefit from this step. 
I am very confident that we can do more and we can do better. And I want to encourage Safaricom and your partners to continuously assess this facility so that progressively we can move towards a much more favorable interest regime that gives majority of Kenyans the opportunity to have flexible arrangements on their financial requirements. I also want to say the following, that um, Fuliza is addressing a certain category of uh, borrowers on short term. As you have indicated yourselves, there is more traction towards 14 days, 11, 14 days. It should speak to you that you need to think about other instruments and other facilities that should be able to take care of a slightly longer term borrowers. I also want to state here that the government of Kenya, and I have the nominee for Treasury here and the nominee for ICT here, we are going, these two gentlemen will be working with you in the financial fintech space because we want to work on credit, especially for our micro, small, and medium enterprises. That is the space where we have the largest opportunity. That is the space that employs almost 80% of our population, and yet they are constrained by access to credit. I have listened to many of them in the campaign trail. I was giving these good people an example of Shiko in Ruaka Market and her team. They borrow a million shillings every day and they pay as high interest as 10% per day, which translates into 3,600% per year. Shiko and her team, they don't want free money. They are telling me, Mr. President, can we pay the same interest that Kenya Breweries is paying? Can we pay the same interest that the big companies are paying? That's all they are asking, and I don't think it's too much to ask. So, progressively, and the assignment I'm going to be giving to these two gentlemen is to work with you in the private sector to develop a product where Shiko, a mamamboga in Ruaka, and a boda boda person can also have access to credit at single digit rate. And I am willing to work with you in a public private arrangement so that we can mitigate some of the risks that come with lending to that category of Kenyans. I am very confident. I am very confident that if we give Shiko and her team and many of them in Kenya the opportunity to borrow at single digit interest rate, they can double if not triple their business. And it is good for everybody. It is good for the fintech companies, it is good for the banks, it is good for the taxpayer, it's good for the taxman, and it's also good for me. <laughs> so I think, I think we can have a win-win. I think it's good, it's, it, we're going to have a win-win arrangement. So, um, in, the, in the short term, the assignment uh, Elio Dawalo and my good friend Professor uh, Njuguna will have is to structure with yourselves the Hustler Fund. We are ready to commit public resources to underwrite some of the risks so that chamas, cooperatives, SACOs can access credit at single digit interest rate. This is the future we are looking at. And from 
where I sit, we can make it a reality in a very short time. Secondly, in this space, we should also, and I have heard from NCPA, we should also find the model that encourages savings. Borrowing functions best when we have savings. Because you cannot, you cannot borrow what you don't have. And we have continuously borrowed the savings of others, and that is why we are becoming slave, slaves to our lenders. It is time every Kenyan, and uh, we are working with other sectors, including NSSF and other financial instruments, to make sure that we take our savings from the current maybe 9, maybe 10 percent of GDP to 20, 25 percent of GDP. That way we can have not just a secure present, but we can also have secure or ensure our future. I am looking forward uh, to working with all the actors in this space to ensure that we build our savings culture and our borrowing must not only be responsible, but it must also be affordable. I like the words the governor said here about affordability. That way we can spur the uh, activities of many of our micro, small enterprises who are struggling today, not because their enterprises cannot do well, but they are limited by access to credit and access to financing for what they want to do. We will also be working on ensuring that our stock exchange also works better. It can also be another source of making sure that we can raise resources that can help build our enterprises. Um, uh, that is why I have created the Ministry for Trade, Investment and Industry so that we can look much more closely to our financial markets, work much more closely with our um, state-owned enterprises, look critically at some of them, and assess the ones we can bring the Kenyan public to be owners of some of these state-owned um, state enterprises so that we can share in the profits and we can also release some resources for us to be able to deliver on some of our infrastructure requirements instead of uh, borrowing either from uh, uh, the market locally or borrowing from the external market. We will be working together in this space, and I want to, I know I've been, I've disturbed the governor a lot with many telephone calls, but I appreciate that um, he's been forthright and, uh, and a gentleman, and sometimes when uh, you see too many of my calls, it's because your customers are on my case. So just, just take it positively. It has, it's nothing personal. It is because somebody must do um, the bidding for those who cannot uh, access the offices that they need to. So this afternoon, um, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I am very happy to be part of this uh, occasion. I look forward, Degwan, your team. I look forward to... Um, we've done, as the governor said, we've made the first step. I hope we'll be making the other steps so that uh, if come down 50%, maybe we can do another 50%. <laughs> <laughs> you know? In, in, those, in those many steps Governor was talking about. So, so that, uh, you know, there is no harm. We've already set a record for ourselves. M-Pesa in itself is a Kenyan innovation that has really uh, um, uh, taken the world by storm. Why don't we try another feat that is not only, it's not only giving us financial inclusion, 
it is giving us affordable credit. You know, we, we can begin to, to walk that journey. And I think you yourselves have seen the value of scale. M-Pesa was 600,000 people. Now it is 20 million, 31 million, you see? So, and, and you're, you're making more money with charging less than you are making charging more with few people. So I think this is the, the I'm not teaching you what to do. You know, you know better than me. Uh, so uh, I will encourage you to walk that journey. Uh, Governor, please explain to our good friends in the CRB space that we do not, it's not our position that we are against CRBs, no. Our position is that we should change the model of listing so that we do not make it an all or nothing and we do not criminalize and we do not uh, unfairly disadvantage borrowers, but we give them an opportunity to be listed, in a, uh, to be scored, so that we have a graduated list that people can, can work their way up. So let me say I am happy to be part of this uh, very important uh, step in our country, and I look forward to working with you, making credit for millions of citizens accessible. Um, uh, my two friends here will will be uh, no no will will have a clearer brief on what we need to achieve as a, as an administration, and we are going to work with you to make sure that we go that journey together. I'm also happy, uh, Governor, that you are bringing into the regulation space our online betting companies. Um, because we also want them to pay taxes. At the moment, they are operating in a space that is opaque. Uh, <laughs> I, I know opaque has many <laughs> connotations lately and not very positive ones. But that space needs more, much more clarity, and I am happy that the uh, Central Bank of Kenya is taking steps to bring um, uh, the actors in the online betting space to um, regulation so that we can make them much more accountable and they can also support us build this country by everybody paying their peace and paying their taxes so that we can, we can develop the country uh, together. So otherwise, uh, we will be engaging as we, as we move on, and I look forward to working with you to make sure that we have accessible, affordable uh, credit. It is our intention overally to bring down the cost of living in Kenya. And cost of living has many components. We are working with fertilizer and other actors to bring down the cost of food. We are working with our housing program to bring down the cost of shelter and making sure that people have a affordable uh, housing. And with you, uh, good people, also bring down the cost of credit mm -hmm. so that we can make Kenya a better place for all of us. Thank you very much, and God bless you.